Hi everybody, my name is Brianna Janes. I am hosting my new channel called Breaking Chains, The Whitney Project, inspired by my past sister, Whitney Janes, that passed away on November 21st, 2018. This is my best friend. Her name is Ariel Fuentes. She is 23 years old. Sadler. Sadler. Ariel Sadler. <laughs> I still call her Fuentes because I've known her my whole life, pretty much. Um, today we're going to talk about um, having a child young and what it was like for her to grow up uh, moving back and forth between towns and uh, basically raising children as a child, growing up in a family that had a daycare. So, uh, as some of you know, her mother has a daycare and has always had children in the house. Yeah. I met Ariel when I was nine years old. It was actually the year I became a vegetarian. I remember she was wearing this, like, uh jumpsuit this all red, red jumpsuit all, all red. red and I had this little blue like pretty shirt on and some jeans <laughs> and I turned around and creeped her the hell out and I'm like hi my name's Brianna let's be friends best friends and, since day one yep and she had a little rainbow monkey and she was holding it and looking at me like I was freaking her the hell out <laughs> and she still managed to like me with my you know abundantly outbursting annoying self brought so, me out of my shell exactly so Ariel um, tell me, what are your interests? Um, well, Talk about. I like, you know, just being around my family because there's a lot of them. <laughs> and, you know, just kind of trying to relax with all the chaos is a little hard, but, you know, we find our way. Mm -hmm. So. Now, when is it? When did you find yourself having to help your mother take care of other children in the house? And how did you go about doing this? And how did it affect you? Uh, I was about nine years old when Brandon was born. And we just moved to Westfield. The parents just split up. So it was kind of, um, you know, just new baby brother, new town, new school, new friends. You know, just uh, that's just how it started. Yeah. Did you have a hard time with introducing a new person into the family, or was it easier for you to take on a role? No, it was, um, I don't know, it was kind of normal because my cousin was born around the same time. They're about the same age. Mm -hmm. So, you know, babies in the family, just kind of a common thing. Plus, I'm one of the eldest, so... I don't know, just being around younger people <laughs> in general. Now, Ariel and me both had children around the same age. Ariel had her daughter, I think, at 19. This, 19. At 19. This is this this one. Fucking me. <laughs> and yeah. I had my daughter but, at 18. Mom, no, no, my one <laughs> this is Evie. No, mom, let me go, let me go. This let is her go. daughter. And no. mine is over here, too. With that being said, I think we had two totally different approaches to parenting. I had never had any children in the house. I was not used to kids. I didn't even really like kids. Here's an example right now. They're very distracting. And I was not used to it. Now, hey honey, you gotta stay out of the view of the camera, cutie. Thank you. And with that being said, um, I think Lily was definitely a deal breaker for me because I wasn't used to being around children. I had been around my boyfriend's sister's kids a lot and that was my first introduction to watching kids. And to a level I was okay with it, but on another side of it, it was really hard for me. So like my mom basically helped me with my daughter all the time and I especially me going through addiction that was like a big thing if I hadn't had my mother yeah. like I would have lost my daughter now I think Ariel went through kind of the opposite situation where she actually helped her mother with the daycare kids and managed to take on parenting immediately tell me what you felt when you came into motherhood um I just felt prepared uh, it wasn't anything that I wasn't used to. Uh, I had already changed diapers for 10 plus years. Boys, girls, you know. Uh, so it wasn't, there wasn't really much that I wasn't already aware of. So I just kind of got to sit back and watch Genevieve just blossom. Now, what was the best part about becoming a parent? 
that she was mine. Like this baby was for me. I didn't have to give her to her mom. You know, she wasn't getting picked up, you know, to go with her back to her family because she was mine. Hey guys, shh. Be quiet guys, thanks. Shh. <laughs> Loudness. That's kids. Um, yeah, I think Ariel was really happy to have a child of her own. Mm -hmm. I was really excited. Um, and I, she actually came in here early, which was kind of, you know, one of those things, but that's life. Yeah, which is actually kind of nice. Cause, guys, you have we're to filming watch. a video. You got to be quiet. See, this is why I can't parent, because I'll beat every child's uh, butt. But so. It's okay. <laughs> So, yeah, no, I think Ariel has done a great job of parenting with her husband, Jake, and amazingly, they've made it through all of this, whereas, like me, I definitely struggle just having one child around at all. Like, you know, I have a low tolerance for any type of bullshit. Like, I cannot handle loud noises. I can't handle, you know, yeah. screaming, crying, and she just tolerates it, like, perfectly. Because it's, it's just been an all around the clock thing for well now my whole life basically so i think it's yeah. cool that she's a, she's a stay at home parent for the most part too she does work a lot like she goes back and forth and she has jobs but like she's always stayed home and watched kids and helped and like i'm the opposite where all i do is work and i'm like never home because all i do is work and i think that like i would do great with a wife <laughs> just kidding stay at home wife no really like I do need a man that likes to stay at home and do nothing but watch my child but that's yeah, a whole nother working. story and obviously I have a man for that eventually in the future maybe probably not but yeah um Ariel has been a really good influence on my life I used to hide a lot of my uh personal flaws because I didn't want to influence her in any way and when I went through really traumatic experiences, I didn't want her to feel the backlash of those or to be experiencing those things with me because I felt that it would um, maybe change her appearance of me, but in reality, it didn't. No. And I'm all. very thankful of that because she still is one of the few people that looked up to me in my addiction. I mean, that's really hard to find people that still look up to you and care about you when you're stealing from them and everybody else and you can't even think straight for five minutes. So for me, it was nice. I remember I went to her and her husband's house and they were struggling. They were living in this apartment in Fredonia. You know, they were trying to make ends meet. They had a lot of different situations happening. They had just had their daughter, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, she didn't want a drug addict coming in her house, but here I am in her house, you know, um, she was watching my daughter for me. My boyfriend was out getting arrested in another town with one of my friends that was out like stealing from places. Like it was just a crazy yeah. situation. And she was sitting there like trying to help me through my, uh, my detox. And she was like, you know, we can help you out. We can do whatever we can do to watch your daughter and help you. But in the end, like for me, it helped just to know I had somebody there for me like that. But on her end, it was almost like I felt like I was kind of being abrasive and coming into a situation that was not my own and it really wasn't my place. But she never made me feel like that, which was nice. I used to come in there and eat all her freaking food. Yeah, eat it all. Eat it all. Go I ahead. I have no care in the world. Go um, ahead. Can you talk about um, has addiction in the lives of your friends, family, um, people around you, has it affected you in your life and um, how has it affected you? indirectly or directly or in any way it's it's affected a lot of things like it's affected my mom the most um because for me i mean i just um i don't know i don't try to get too close with you know whoever you know because like there's you're gonna get drawn into anyone's drama mm -hmm. um so but, I mean, for the most part, I try not to let it affect me at all, because I, I got my priorities straight for the most part. I have, you know, I've got Genevieve, you know, I've got to work, you know, and I've got to, you know, help out here as much as I can, because I live here, you mm -hmm. know. And with, like, eight-plus kids, you know, that uh, don't live here, that come here every day for daycare, you know, I kind of, you know, my mom needs a little help, you know, with yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, but um, I mean, 
stuff, drama all the time, it happens, and, you know, people try to drag you into it, but, um, I don't know, I just kind of, if it's bullshit, I just, I just call bullshit, really, <laughs> honestly, because it's like, every five minutes, you know, somebody's gonna come up and be like, oh, <laughs> I got, I got robbed, because whatever, I'm, and, you know, it all leads down to just because they're Same doing thing. drugs or something, and it's just like, well, that's what you get, that's, that's what happens you it's, know it's the lifestyle and you yeah. can't escape the lifestyle and as long as somebody around you is in it you are going to be dragged into it and the best thing you can do is support that person from a distance and give them the love that they need while hoping they get better but it's really hard to deal with that and not let it hurt you because yeah. an addict although they think that they're hurting themselves only they really are hurting everyone else around them yeah every rose has its thorns and I think that that's a part of life now. But luckily, Ariel is a great mother, a great best friend, a great person, and a great godmother to my daughter. Um, I know that if I passed away, my mother passed away, and my daughter was left to her, I would have nothing to worry about. Yeah. And, I love Liliana um, anyway. She's a sweetie. She's just my she's daughter's just a awesome. nice. She's just a nice girl anyway. My she daughter never gives me any good. problems. I'm very lucky to have such a good girl. She's very smart, mm -hmm. and I'm glad that she's very tolerant of me as a mother, which is very nice because, you know, not many kids are so smart to understand the way their parent is. And, you know, she's gone through a lot of bad things, my daughter has, and I think it's awesome that she has, like, made it through this far without having some real troubles, you know. And I'm happy to have her, even though I'm not the most maternal parent. I am happy to have a daughter and have my life turned around and have good friends and good family around me. Well, thank you so much for this interview. Yeah. I love you so love you much. Too. Thank you. <laughs> have a good day, guys. Thank you for watching.